In today's video, you are going to learn how to confidently crush your forehand with that massive topspin. And if you're someone who's struggling with sailing your balls long right now, you are going to love this video because we're going to break down Federer and Nadal, players with some of the most dominant forehands of all time. We're going to break down their technique into the backswing, the acceleration, and the contact point. All along the way, I'm going to provide you with that confidence, with that boost of giving you immediate action-based drills, specifically how each phase of the shot should feel so you can immediately start growing and gaining that confident, dominant forehand weapon the next time you step on the court. I'm super excited to jump right in where we're going to cover the optimal contact point. To immediately feel totally in control and generate that massive topspin and effortless power, it's all about the contact point. As we'll see Federer and Nadal, during their forward swing, they're going to make contact with their arm positioned in front of the body with the racket parallel to the surface of the court, just like that. The reason why this contact point is so important and is going to allow you to generate that massive spin and effortless pop is because by having the arm in front of the body, this gives you the maximum leverage and force from your big muscles of the arm, like the pec and the shoulder. Also, by positioning your arm in front of the body like this, as you internally rotate your shoulder, this allows you to generate the maximum surface area of the racket. Conversely, if my hand was bent in too close like this, watch what happens. The racket is going to cover much less surface area versus having it in front, it's going to generate way more topspin and allow you to tap uh, into that massive spin on your forehand, hitting out just like that. So to make sure that you're doing this specific contact point every time you step on the court, go ahead and follow along with me here where we're going to start from the transition point. On the ATP forehand, the racket from the backswing will accelerate into the flip. From the flip, the racket will travel uh, initially on a very straight line direction towards the ball. However, once the transition point is achieved, this is where the racket is going to be perpendicular to the net. From that position, that's where the majority of that topspin is going to be generated. So what you can do to get a great feel for this contact point and, and really optimize your muscle memory here is start with your torso facing towards the net, just like that, with your racket already preset at the transition point. From there, keeping your body totally still, toss the ball in front and focus on pulling your arm forward, accomplishing three different motions. Motion number one, horizontal shoulder adduction. Adduction, that's being driven from that pec and that shoulder. Right off the bat, if you start accelerating from these bigger muscles, you'll notice that your forehands immediately start generating way more uh, topspin, and it just feels amazing. I mean, my forehand always used to feel weak. Once I learned these muscles, it took off for me, just like you're going to have on your forehand, that massive confidence. So the first piece, make sure that racket is perpendicular to the net with your chest parallel to the net. The second motion here, shoulder flexion. That's the arm going up. So you've got the arm going forward, the arm going up. The third and final motion is going to be shoulder internal rotation. Internal rotation. That's what creates that topspin. So if you combine the adduction, the flexion, and the internal rotation, now we have that massive windshield wiper forehand, and you're immediately going to start feeling that effortless pop in topspin just like that. Now that you have a rock solid intuition over what the final phase of the stroke should look like, let's jump into the acceleration. All right, you're now one step closer to being that world-class athlete, to having that confidence because you know exactly what the contact point should be and the exact muscles that you want to use to drive the arm forward to that contact. Now, we're going to start from the initial part of the acceleration. And by mastering this, let's go ahead and pull up Federer and let's go ahead and pull up Nadal. By mastering this phase of the acceleration towards what you just learned about the transition point, you're going to start tapping into way more confident power uh, and even more topspin in your shots through actually using less effort but more intelligent technique by tapping into using the proven science and the biomechanics. So let's take a very detailed look at what's going to happen 
during the initial part of the acceleration. Watch how when Federer and Nadal drive their legs, their racket will lag behind the arm, creating a flip position. This flip, otherwise known as the dynamic slot, is not a conscious motion, but it's a natural consequence of you trying to basically do this with your arm. Because the racket naturally has a lot of weight at the head, what's gonna happen is as you pull the shaft of the racket forward, the head of the racket will naturally wanna lag behind. And what this does is it creates three unconscious motions in your hitting arm, which turbocharges your power, giving you that top spinning confidence. The three unconscious motions are gonna be shoulder external rotation, which by the way, you're not trying to externally rotate your shoulder, you're actually trying to internally rotate your shoulder, internally rotate your shoulder, but the weight of the racket is naturally lagging behind. The second is slight supination of the forearm. The third motion is the glorified wrist lag position, <laughs> which is basically just uh, simply put wrist extension. Now, what this flip does is it basically turbocharges the muscles that you just learned about in the anatomical swing you ju we just covered in that pro contact point. So what this is basically doing is when you achieve this checkpoint position of the racket above the hand, the arm at about 530, and you initiate the stroke from the legs, from the core, pulling the racket forward, the racket naturally lags behind, giving you that stretch, giving you that turbocharged forehand. Now, this can be kind of challenging and kind of counterintuitive, especially if you've never done this before, because essentially what's happening is the racket only goes back as you accelerate forward. And what most players do is they consciously take their racket back and then swing. But if you want to tap into that massive topspin and hit the eights beforehand, you've got to keep the wrist relaxed and cause the racket to go back by accelerating and going forward. Now, the next time you step on the court, one drill that you can use to immediately start taking action in growing this massive topspin forehand is making sure to create a lot of relaxation in the wrist before you initiate your forward swing. So what you can do is prep your racket in that checkpoint you just learned and go ahead and bounce your racket up and down in your hand, uh, uh, keeping a very relaxed wrist. What this is gonna do is it's gonna uh, re relieve any tension in the wrist, making sure you're achieving that contact point. Once you shake it, go ahead and accelerate from the legs, focusing on those three motions, the adduction, the flexion, and the internal rotation. So shaking, 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 tossing, uh, driving the legs, rotating, adduction, flexion, internal rotation, and you're finally gonna start tapping in to that maximum topspin. Okay, we've now covered a lot. We've covered the transition point to contact, and now we've covered from the backswing to the acceleration to that transition point. Let's close with how you can achieve that perfect backswing position every single time. All right, world-class athlete. So how exactly should you execute your backswing to really get that maximum fluidity and effortless power on your forehand and topspin just like that? Now, I've broken down the backswing into two primary anatomical motions. Let's go and grab Roger Federer and Rafa Nadal again. As they execute their backswing, you'll see that instead of uh, uh, the common mistake that a lot of players do of jerking their arm back, they're gonna very fluidly set their racket down into that backswing position. The two primary anatomical motions here is just slightly drawing the elbow back, which is horizontal shoulder abduction and wrist extension. So really focus here as you step on the court and apply these drills with confident action, make sure that you're just relaxed setting this position in a very fluid manner. The opposite is to be very tense and kind of jerk the racket back and forth prior to contact, but that's gonna create massive inconsistency, tightness, and ultimately not allow you to get that maximum pop. So to execute that perfect backswing, focus on very relaxed, setting the racket down to that configuration. 
with a lot of fluidity and uh, effortless whip into your forehand, just like that. All right, world-class athlete, that concludes this week's video. I had so much fun serving you today. It was my honor, it was a thrill. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this to the end. I really appreciate you for doing that and taking this time to committing yourself to mastery. I'm so thrilled to be on this journey with you. As always, make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I cannot wait to see you in the next video.